Hey guys, it's Press On. It's been a really long time since I've seen you all. So happy October, happy really, really early Halloween and happy autumn to everybody. So I have to address the elephant in the room here first. I've been gone a while <laughs> and I have missed you guys so, so much. I really didn't want to be away, however, life as it does tends to have a mind of its own from literally the beginning of July till probably about a week ago. My life has been incredibly crazy. I have had to deal with losing my job. I had gotten COVID. Thankfully, I had only gotten the really mild case, so it basically was the equivalency of having a really intense sinus infection so I couldn't smell anything and I couldn't taste anything so that wasn't fun. Aside from that basically just I had to cut ties with the entire um my mother's side of the family. It had gotten really toxic and mentally and emotionally abusive and that was just something I couldn't take anymore. It was truly making me sick physically and I guess mentally and emotionally, and I couldn't keep dealing with something like that. So I cut ties and I'm currently living with one of my closest friends who has basically adopted me as her daughter. So she's my adoptive mom. Hi mom, if you're watching this. So back to the main thing at hand. Yes, I am back. Wouldn't say better than ever because I still have a lot of things to learn on booktube, but back, ready, excited to see you all, to interact with all of you, and to show you what I'm going to be reading for October because I'm really excited for this. The first thing I'm going to read is going to be The Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Nyan. Now, I have been told by multiple people, other booktubers, other people who I've talked to in my own age bracket that this is an amazing, amazing story. It is heavily Asian influenced. There's magic, there's romance. It's a female, female romance. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how Natasha brings this story together. From what I've been told, there is a trigger warning for sexual assault and violence. So um, be warned if you guys end up reading it also. I haven't gotten to read this yet, but I am really excited. This is going to be the first one I'm trying out to read. The thing is, is that I wish I could give you guys something other than this lovely, lovely cover on my Surface Go tablet. However, because my funds are lacking incredibly right now, I only have them through the library on my Kindle, which is better than nothing. Otherwise I wouldn't be able to show you guys anything. <laughs> and I'm just really, really looking forward to it. Um, Haven't really been able to read a lot in the past couple months while I've been gone also. And that's just really big for me just because I love being able to interact uh, with the characters and go on adventures and just see life through their eyes and not being able to was it was hard, but I'm excited that I get to do this. And this is the first one, so I'm really looking forward to it. The next one I have on deck is called Wish You Were Dead by Todd Strasser. So maybe, hold on, right like that, maybe, possibly. I think, yeah, right there, yeah. So this is a thriller. It's a psychological thriller. I'm really... How do I put it this way? I don't do horror, which is weird because Halloween is my absolute favorite holiday ever. I mean, you get to dress up, you get candy, there are parties, you get to wear pajamas to school. Okay, at least when I was in elementary school, you could. It's just a great time. You get to be able to do all sorts of things. You get a little bit of trick and a little bit of scary, but I don't do super scary. So I tend to just not go 
to any big events where there are scary things, i.e. clowns and, you know, haunted houses and horror movie marathons. But anyway, one of the things I have been able to do is read thriller novels and oh my, this one, I was reading the synopsis on Libby, which is the app that I have, which attaches from my library to Kindle. And oh my, guys, they have pretty much dubbed this as the um, modern adaption of I Know What You Did Last Summer, but I guess it's on steroids. So instead of it being just another person, this is a blogger who every person he writes or he or she writes on their blog, they end up disappearing or dying, it seems like from what the synopsis has said. And so I'm really looking forward to seeing what happens and if the main character can solve the mystery in time, unless she gets ended up on the list also. And that would be kind of a bad thing. <laughs> and yeah, I, I don't really want to end up on anyone's list unless, you know, they're giving me presents or, you know, that I'm, you know, getting something exciting or they're telling me how awesome I am. <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. No one thinks I'm that awesome. Okay, majority of the time. All right, this one is number three. Oh, this one is both very intriguing to me and very, very terrifying. It is also a thriller, and this is the gothic thriller. This is going to be, if I can get it to work, yep. This is, uh, come on, The Tenth Girl by Sarah Faring. And from what I can understand, this um, young teacher, she was originally from Buenos Aires, and her mom had died in the revolution of one of the military coming in and taking over. And so she ends up moving to Argentina and becomes the uh, one of the teachers at this house. And so as time goes on in the story, apparently uh, girls end up missing and they end up dead. And so it's the trying to have her figure out also what's going on because they're are all these spirits and hauntings and if she doesn't figure out what's going to happen soon she's going to end up dead and it always seems to be the female who's the one who ends up I guess being the I guess the person who has to figure everything out it seems like in a lot of thrillers that I've read I'm hoping to eventually find a protagonist who is male who is the one who gets to find something so if you guys can see any or have found any please leave it in the comments down below because I really want to try to read one but I'm very much looking forward to this I mean just look at the cover doesn't that want don't you just want to like read that don't you I mean I do it's, just, it's, it's creepy it's dark it's very Halloween in its own right and so let me grab the last one. So the last book I will be reading, if it will allow me to pull it up, that would be kind of cool. Is it going to let me do it? I do not know. Well, apparently my tablet doesn't like me today, so I'm kind of kind of sad on that. But um, from what it is going to be telling me, I guess we'll just keep going because whatever it's the book is going to be the Athena Protocol and it is by Shamim Seraf. now I had never heard of this one I follow a lot of companies and other bookstagrammers and booktubers on either Twitter Instagram etc and I haven't ever seen it before or heard of it so the moment I saw it I lost my mind because this is the cover finally thank you so from what it seems from everything that i've read about it it is pretty much the all-female cast 
and spy thriller and pretty much mixing Jason Bourne or like a female Jason Bourne into it. And it's this giant spy thriller. And I, I love spy movies. I love spy books. I just, I love spies. They're wonderful. They make me very happy. <laughs> so this is going to be her name. Oh my gosh, sorry, my neck is hurting. Her name is Jessica. And so she ends up going against the Athena Protocol, which is the company she ends up working for. And she ends up basically getting dismissed or removed from the company before she's able to go after this uh, major villain who she was really wanting to go after. And it turns out that there's more to the story and there are people who were on different sides who she didn't know about or one vice versa. And so she's trying to race against the clock, trying to figure everything else out about this villain and everything else. I think he was a drug lord, I believe, from what the synopsis had said. Sadly, my picture does not give me anything like that to tell you. But it is very interesting because instead of it just being her on her own, she also has all of her former, I guess, teammates or member spies who are also hunting her down at the exact same time. And it's going to be very interesting for me just to see how this all plays out to see, I guess, who wins in a way from what I had been reading when I decided to read this one. Apparently there is a sequel to it. So it'll be, I guess, curious in the way just trying to figure out will I read the second one is it going to be good enough so who knows but those are all the books I'm going to be reading however I've decided I want to read one graphic novel as well so this is one that is very near and dear to my heart it is not just only near and dear just because of the name of it and just because I kind of think it suits this month but also just the fact that Originally, when I had seen it, it was something that my boyfriend ended up having and then he ended up letting me read it and it just, I got hooked and so I now have all of them and the fifth volume comes out, I believe, on the sixth. So this is going to be really exciting, but this is Monstrous. Ooh, stop. Hey, maybe there we go. So it is written by Marjorie Louis. And it is the art done by Sana Takeda. And it is... The art in it is just, it's stunning. And yes, even though I've read it before, it's been like almost two years. So I vaguely remember things. I don't quite remember others. I'm kind of just in that moment of, okay, well, what do I do? Do I remember everything? So I decided just to reread it because... The name of it alone, just monstrous in and of itself, it really draws the reader in, not to mention obviously the artwork is absolutely stunning and volume one's called Awakening, so I think that's very, very interesting. So to put this one simply from rereading synopses and from what I remember, it's pretty much a high Asian-influenced, high fantasy I guess, steampunk matriarchal society based in the 20th century. And there is the main character. She ends up sharing her body with this monster. And so it can, I guess, take parts of her body over at certain points. So not quite Parasite to all of you who watch anime, but I feel like it's more so in regards to the fact of just intensity and how it talks to her instead of just acting on its own from what I've seen. So I'm really looking forward to reading this again and truly, I guess, giving an honest review on it. I had written about it in um, my Goodreads and I don't think I gave it, I guess, the right amount of exposure or I gave it the right um, review. So I really want to be able to write a true and honest review for it and be able to give you guys something that is worth seeing and to give my real feelings on the graphic novel. I just 
not even just for sentimental value, I really think I'm going to really enjoy reading this again. And I guess for the moment, that's it, guys. I'm really, really, really excited to read all of these. And I've missed you. Honestly, I've missed you so, so much. It has been too long and I'm going to make sure that I'm going to be on a lot more frequently. I hope that maybe crossing my fingers, crossing my fingers big time, depending on how the next week, week and a half goes, I might be able to do a readathon with you guys in some of the readings that I've been doing or I guess the readings I will be doing. And you guys can watch my process and see how I do things. But I will make sure to figure that out ahead of time. So if I can truly do it, I want to make sure I can give you guys enough heads up so that you guys can come in and join me. And for the moment, I just hope you guys have a great evening, a great rest of your weekend or beginning of your, of your week, depending on who you are. And I guess good morning or good evening to who, I guess, whatever time zone you're in. And I look forward to seeing you guys soon and spending more time with you guys. All right. Bye, guys.